Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Bobby Howe, amateur radio call sign W9GRH. I make uh, videos on a variety of topics and these include amateur radio, the guitar, home repairs, and electronics repairs. For those of you who don't know, the terms amateur radio and ham radio are synonymous. I've been inspired recently by another ham. His name is Tracy. His call sign is VE3TWM. And like me, uh, he lives on a su small suburban lot where um, space is at a premium. He doesn't really have room to put up uh, large antennas. So uh, my situation is much the same. And his solution is to take his amateur radio activities outdoors to campsites and out in the wilderness, things like that, where you can put up very large uh, antennas, wire antennas, and operate um, to his satisfaction. And I'm doing uh, much the same thing, and that's part of the purpose of this video. I'm using many of Tracy's ideas, but also some of my own as well. And in this video, I'm developing two ideas. The first one is how to put up temporary antennas at my own home QTH. And the second is to show you some of my, what I call amateur radio road gear that I've assembled to take out in the field and to operate remotely. For my equipment, I'm using the Yaesu FT891 transceiver, uh, the MFJ741-E tuner, a DX engineering ballon, and I'm driving a doublet antenna cut for 10 through 40 meters. By putting up and taking down temporary antennas at my home QTH, I can accomplish a couple of things. One is to become better at it and do it more quickly. And the second thing is that I don't have to leave these antennas out in the rain, the wind, snow, the ice, and so that they'll become corroded and so forth and so on. I got the plans for this doublet antenna from a DX Engineering webpage called How to Choose the Correct Ballon, written by a ham named Tom, W8JI. I'm going to cover some of the main points about the antenna in this video, but there are even more detail, there is even more detail rather, uh, on the webpage, and I encourage you to take a look at it. It's well worth the reading, and there's some really good material there. This doublet antenna works really well. I'm really pleased with the way it works. Stay tuned because later in the video there will be some QSOs that you can listen to from hams all across the country. I've already mentioned the equipment that I'm using, but I'll quickly include a few important details here. The Yaesu FT891 that I'm using is stock except for functions that I wanted on the front panel A, B, and C buttons, and also the voice processing for transmit audio. There's a YouTube video by Tim, Golf 5 Tango Mexico, and I used his recommendations to adjust my transmit audio. The MFJ VersaTuner 2 model MFJ-941E is stock, and that's kind of self-explanatory. I do want to mention, however, that I use the external 12-volt input for meter illumination on the uh, tuner, and I use my batteries to power that, and it comes in very handy in dark conditions. The DX Engineering Ballon is a 1.5 kilowatt PEP single sideband, 1.8 to 54 megahertz, which covers the 160 through 6 meter amateur radio bands. Now some people might say, you know, that DX Engineering Ballon is really overkill. It's pricey and it's rated to withstand far more power than is needed to run QRP or something in the 100 watt range. That is true, and I am in the process of winding some of my own ballons to use in my own setup. But for me, the purpose served here is to have a battle tank ballon that will take any punishment it might unfortunately encounter, and it's one I can depend upon above all else. I have two of the lithium iron phosphate batteries that you see in this photo here. Uh, as I'm operating QRP with only 10 watts single sideband. These batteries uh, have uh, served me pretty well. By the way, I do not work for, nor am I being compensated to endorse any products featured here in this video. Now I'll say a couple of things about the antenna. As already mentioned, the antenna is covered in detail on the DX Engineering website page called Choosing the Correct Ballon, written by Tom, W-H-J-I. But I'll cover some highlights here. The 27.5 foot lengths of the two antenna radiating elements and the 46.2 foot length of the 300 ohm ladder line are somewhat critical. 
These lengths can vary a little bit, but I wouldn't go much beyond a 1 or 2% variance from these values. The 46.2 foot length is three times the recommended 1 8 wavelength increments for the ladder line. The ladder line length needs to be an odd multiple of 15.4 feet. Keep in mind that the chosen lowest band of operation for this antenna is 40 meters. The length of the RG213 uh, jumpers are not critical, but the shorter the better. The Ballon article recommends that the coax between the tuner and Ballon be kept to 10 feet or shorter. One of the main benefits to using ladder line to feed an antenna is that it is far less lossy than coax cable. That is to say, more significantly, that more power, more transmitter power that is, reaches your antenna. Working with ladder line can be a bit tricky, but as long as a couple of rules are kept in mind, a very effective antenna installation is the likely result. Ladder line should not be run in close proximity to any significantly sized pieces of metal. For example, this antenna with the ladder line feed should not be mounted on a metal mast with the idea of using wire ties to secure the ladder line to the mast. The metal mast will detune or interfere with the RF signal energy in the ladder line causing high SWR and poor radiation. I use a fiberglass pole as the mast on which to mount this antenna and I can highly recommend using that method. I'm only skimming the surface of the technical aspects of the antenna here and encourage you to read the DXE webpage that has already been referenced for more detailed information. It is really worth the read. Any questions or comments you might have about this antenna, put them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them for you. In the installation at my home QTH, the fiberglass pole is just basically hanging in place on the side of my house as the following photos will show, but it is secure and I feel very comfortable with the mechanical stability of the installation. Keep in mind that I use this type of installation as a temporary setup. I can set it up and take it down as I wish. I don't particularly want to leave it out in extreme weather such as can be experienced in a harsh Midwest winter. Starting with an eye hook mounted on the side of the roof. At the hardware store I found what are called rope hooks. I mounted one with hose clamps and plastic tubing to protect the fiberglass pole at the appropriate height to simply let the pole hang on the side of the house. You might say this is a hook and eye setup. On the ground, I drove one foot of a two foot piece of PVC pipe into the ground. The protruding piece of PVC pipe fits up into the bottom of the fiberglass pole to keep it in place and secure. I used some PVC pipe and fittings as you see here to make an assembly to cover the junction of the ladder line and both horizontal radiating elements. The first one I made was from 1 inch pipe and fittings. I made another one out of smaller 1 half inch pipe and fittings to reduce the size and weight. I'm sure some will say that it looks like overkill and why would I make and use such a contraption? The answer is that I wanted something that would keep the connection dry in case of an unexpected pop-up rain shower, and they do happen where I live all the time. The assembly is simply connected to an eye hook on the top of the fiberglass pole, and then each section of the fiberglass pole is extended into the air. For this example, the highest point of the antenna is at about 33 feet from the ground. The 27.5 foot antenna radiating elements don't reach all the way to the ground, so insulators are used on the ends. One side of the insulator attaches to the antenna radiating elements. The other side attaches to nylon rope, which is secured to the ground. The ends of the nylon rope are tied off to doggy leash yard tie downs, which screw into the ground. The ladder line comes into my house through a hole in the siding, which I cover up with a hole plug when not in use. On the inside, I found a PVC fitting which I simply screwed into the wood header. The PVC fitting has an OD of one and a quarter inches with a one half inch removable center plug. The ladder line makes its way from the outside to the inside through this fitting when the plug is removed and leads into my garage where I can operate on a temporary basis whenever I choose to. This is a setup that I really like and is convenient for me. Now here are some examples of some QSOs that I've had using this antenna and the previously mentioned equipment. Thank you, John 73, Whiskey 4, Mike, Yankee Alpha. Whiskey 9, Golf, Romeo Hotel. W9. Whiskey 9, Golf, Romeo Hotel, QRP. Name is Bob, state is Illinois. Whiskey 9, Jeremy Radio Hotel. Thanks, Bob. It's also Bob in Virginia. QSL. QSL. Thanks, good luck, QSL. Roger, K2 Radio, Denmark. Whiskey 9, Golf Romeo Hotel. Who's the hotel? 
Whiskey 9, Golf, Romeo Hotel, QRP. Name here is Bob, state is Illinois, over. Roger, Bob, 73, Kilo 2, Radio, Denmark, NA. Whiskey 9, Golf, Romeo Hotel. W9TRH, I need your name and state, please. Yes, name here is Bob, state is Illinois. Uh, please give your call sign one more time, your name and state. Roger, Bob, it's Pat, Papa Alpha Tango in California. The call sign is November, X-ray 6 Tango, QSL. Thank you so much, and 7-3. 7-3. Whiskey 9, Golf, Romeo Hotel, QRP. Whiskey 9 again. Whiskey 9, Golf, Romeo Hotel, QRP. This is Bob, state is Illinois. Okay, I got Whiskey 9, Golf, Romeo Hotel. Name, again, and then state, please. Name is Bob, Broken Old Bottle, state is Illinois. I'm QRP. Thanks, Bob, in Illinois. QRP, thank you much. Have a good day. 7-3. I'll go in before Zulu, Zulu Radio, Tom, in Florida. Whiskey 9, Golf Romeo Hotel. Whiskey number 9, Golf Romeo Hotel, QRP. Name is Bob, state is Illinois. Okay, ending uh, Golf Romeo Hotel, your call again. Call sign is Whiskey 9, Golf Romeo Hotel. I'm, my name is Bob, state is Illinois. Okay, Whiskey 9, Golf Romeo Hotel, Bob, QSL, QSL. Whiskey 9, Golf Romeo Hotel. Yeah, Papa Hotel. Romeo Hotel. Romeo Hotel. Yeah, this is Whiskey number 9, Golf Romeo Hotel. Name is Bob, state is Illinois. Roger, Bob. Uh, let's see, I got you here. Oh, a Whiskey 9 Golf Roger from Romeo Hotel. Yeah. Whiskey 9 Golf Radio Hotel. Very good. Got you, Bob. Thank you. It's Tony in Florida, QSL. QSL. I'm QRP, by the way. Uh, very good. You got a decent signal. You got through the pile of QRZ, QR2 Sugar Golf. November, November 4, Tango, Tango. Whiskey 9 Golf Romeo Hotel. Whiskey 9 Bravo. Whiskey 9 Golf. Romeo Hotel. W9GRH. Thank you, David Florida. Uh, name here is Bob, state is Illinois. I am QRP, by the way. Okay, I got the QRP, and uh, I need your name and state again. Name is Bob, Broken Old Bottle, state is Illinois. Over. Okay, W9GRH, QRP, and Illinois. Thanks, Bob, 73. 73. QRZ? Whiskey 9, Golf Romeo Hotel. Golf Romeo Hotel. You're talking to Jack in Florida, uh, Whiskey 4 Tango Alpha. Uh, very good. Uh, my name is Bob, Broken Old Bottle, and uh, my state is Illinois. I am QRP, by the way. All right. Awesome, Bob from Illinois. Thank you so much for the contact, and good luck. 7 3. 73. Well, that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please check out some of my other videos, and please uh, subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. Uh, any questions you have, uh, put them in the comments below. I'll be happy to try to answer as many of those as I can. I hope to see you the next time. So until then, 73.